What I'm trying to do is wrap up all of the testing by this week because I want to make a very comprehensive report of what I've witnessed and experienced with ProgPow. I want to get that out and available for the Ethereum audit so then they can come through and look of what I'm seeing with the different GPUs. And then I want to go back at this, the end of this week and start testing different block series. Um, and there's been a few more releases to Ethminer with changes to ProgPow and I want to test that too. So a lot to test. Again, this is all to ensure that people have a clear and concise understanding on how prog proof works and then how to start to optimize in preparation for Ethereum switching to it. So then there's a lot of like baseline information that other channels and other people, when they kind of get on the, okay, this is happening. What do I have to do? Um, they can start, you know, they can go through what I've kind of laid down as a foundation and then just kind of pick a segment and just own that segment and do very good videos and walkthroughs and all that kind of stuff on it. So then it helps the community as a whole because now you're going to have a lot of the other contributors doing their own effort and research on how ProgPow works and why this matters. And like people are like, why are you doing so much stuff for the ETH? ETH has, you know, it's natural inflation into this, the current system, even at current price, it's like $650 million a year. So that's what the inflation amount of Ethereum, the amount of Ethereum that comes into the ecosystem, that's a $650 million market right now at current price. So that's the three ETH every, or the two ETH every 15 seconds. And then plus the uncles, you know, they get paid out for an entire year, right? So, and that's at current price. So it gets into a lot more, like potentially billions of dollars per year of inflation that's paid into the miners that are participating. So it's a, it's like, it's like an important subject. So, and that's not, and since it's like community led, you know, when it comes to the, the research on the mining side, like nobody's paying anybody for this. Like we get paid by participating, right? So it's an important subject and, you know, I'm gonna do what I can from my side to help nurture that that entire discussion and then hope that there's other channels and other people that'll take on other aspects of it. Because there's a lot to cover like on that and how can we make it optimized and stuff. And I think it's vital to ensure that you lead by example on that and then other people will kind of catch on and do it. That's kind of where we're going right now with that piece of the ecosystem. So if anybody hasn't been tracking, the Ethereum development meeting had a follow-up yesterday and long and short, they moved forward with the motion to go ahead and move with ProgPow. The question is, there's two essentially audits that are going on. So what's the difference between ProgPow versus other algorithms? And why is it different? What's the programmability of it? You know, is there a wolf in sheep's clothing type of thing when it comes to, you know, was there some vested interest for somebody to build this? And can, is there somebody that's gonna be able to corner the ASIC market that's very tuned for this, you know? So they're trying to look for the, the smoking gun um, through an audit to see if that's really applicable or is there anybody that's qualified to be able to research that. We can observe and report from the, as it is right now, but we're not getting down into the audit level of the code to see if there's an ASIC maker that could do it. What I would say is a challenge back to the ASIC makers out there. You know, Bitmain, anybody that's part of this ecosystem still on the ASIC side, it should be trying to tear that algorithm apart and see if they can. They're in, it's in their best interest to expose if there's issues with that algorithm. And by all of them being silent about it right now, I'm just complaining that Ethereum would move to it, really reinforces the fact that yes, this is an ASIC resistant you know, start and it's gonna take a lot of resources to try to build something specific for it. And that's kind of the point. So the point is to stir up the pot. The point is to have people point out very specific and repeatable flaws or issues with it. That's one part of the audit. And then the second part of it is the benchmarking. That's what I'm trying to help provide information for. So the, you know, how does it run across different cards, different series of cards, different memory settings, different timing, um, performance, power setting, that kind of stuff is the stuff that I'm participating in right now across brand and cards. We're at about 30-ish different brand combo series combos on the spreadsheet that's available on bitspeedtrippin.io. At the bottom, you'll have the little build -all icon of me. You click on that and then there's a spreadsheet that's part of that. And you can see the different settings and configurations that we've used so far and that we're using a fixed block height, which is roughly about the same DAG file size, 2.94 gigabytes to show kind of the effects of that. Some of the older cards I've even tested that have two gigabytes 
and I think we even did, yeah, it was two gigabytes of a thing is the lowest we've went. We haven't went to a one gigabyte. Ethereum starts, like if you forked it from the beginning and have a start DAG file, it starts at a gig. So like if you have a gig card, it's not going to work. If you had a card that has a little over a gig, it would work for just a little bit of time. So we've been testing even the two gig cards because somebody may choose this option like, you know, that doesn't have, that starts the DAG file at, at one gig, and then somebody may move it that has an algorithm, you know, a community may choose, like Ubik or somebody chooses, hey, we're at 1.8 gig uh, DAG file, let's go ahead and fork this. Then you have the two gig cards that get to work with it too. So I'm modifying the block height to be at the right epoch level that creates the DAG that's below two gig. So then we can test and see how does ProgPile work with two gig cards too. So kind of doing both sides of it to make sure that people know what the range uh, is available with the current GPUs that are out there on the market today.